Right. Does that does that make sense? Do you agree? Okay. So you you believe that God is one. Okay. So because He's one, we believe that we cannot worship anything other than Him. So we don't worship any prophet, any stone, any statue, the sun, the moon, the stars. Okay. Because they don't deserve to be worshipped. Because they themselves are created. They themselves are in need of the Creator. That's the that's the bottom line of Islam. Okay. Now, how do we know what God wants from us? We believe that he sent messengers. And these messengers, they were chosen because of their, they were the best of people, they had the best characters, they were the most honest people, the most truthful. So for example, like Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and then we believe after Jesus, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. And they all came with the same religion. We don't believe that some were Jews, some were Christians, some were Muslim. We believe all of them were Muslim, as in they submitted to God. How's that so far? Okay. The basic message of all the messengers was, was three things. Who is God? Like for example, you know the human being, if you leave us alone, we can recognize there must be a God. Because when we look at ourselves, like the fact that we're breathing, the fact that we have a heart, we have lungs, we have eyes, Someone can say there must be a maker. When we look at the, the universe around us, the rotation of the day and the night, the seasons, the falling of the rain, we recognize there must be a God. Okay? But how do we know who God is, what his names and attributes are? We believe that's why messengers came. So the first thing to tell us who is God, his names and attributes. The second thing to tell us, what does God want from us? Like what has God commanded and what has God forbidden? Which way do we have to follow to get to God? That's the second thing. And the third thing is that when we leave this world, when we die, which obviously is guaranteed for everyone, when we leave this world, what is, what is going to happen to us? What happens in the, the unseen, which we believe is you know, paradise or hellfire, but according to how we live this life. So this is the basic message of uh, Islam. Okay. Um, do you have any questions or anything that's stuck in your mind or? Don't, don't be shy, you can ask anything. Okay. Can I just explain the basis of Islam? Okay. The basis of the Islam, we believe in, in six things. We believe in Allah, we believe in one God. We believe in Him, that He alone is the Lord. He is alone is the creator, the, alone is the sustainer, He alone owns everything. Then we believe in the only He deserves to be worshipped. And we do not worship anything which is worshipped other than him, we say this in falsehood. Whether people worship Muhammad, whether people worship Jesus, an angel, we say this is falsehood and rejected. Okay? And we believe in his names and attributes. That's the first thing we believe in. Second, we believe in angels. That God has created angels, Allah has created angels, and they have different roles to bring the rain, to place a soul in the mother's womb, to take the souls at the time of death. Angels over the hellfire, angels over the uh, paradise, and angels who bring the message. Then we believe in the books. We believe that Allah has sent books. So we believe, you know, Moses was given a book, David was given a book, Jesus was given a book, but we believe these previous books have been lost or forgotten or changed. So the last book, the Quran, has come to the last messenger, and this is for all mankind. So that's the, we believe in Allah, we believe in the angels, we believe in the books, and we believe in messengers, which I explained. Then important, the fifth thing we believe in is the last day. We believe that we are going to die, and we're going to go into the grave, and we're going to be questioned. All mankind is going to be asked three questions in the grave. Who is your Lord? What is the way of life you followed? And who is the messenger sent to you? And then after that, there's going to be the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, it's going to be a difficult day. You know, our family, our friends, our wealth, our nationality will not help us. The only thing which will help us is uh, what we believe in and our righteous deeds. And then it's either paradise or hellfire. And then last thing we believe in is the decree. Everything is decreed by God. Everything is decreed by Allah. Whatever happens good or whatever happens bad is by His decree. That's our belief. Okay. Then we have five pillars of Islam you might have heard of. Uh, five pillars of Islam. This is, Islam is a complete way of life. Like how to marry, how to divorce, how to look after your children, how to look after your parents, how to treat your neighbors, how to do business, etc. etc. But Islam is built on five pillars. First is 
that what makes a person a Muslim is they say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. None has the right to worship Allah and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his messenger. Second pillar is you know to pray five times a day. That five times a day a Muslim you know we work, we study, we have families, but five times a day we stop what we're doing and we uh, turn ourselves to our Creator and worship Him. And this is for our benefit. He, he is not in need of us. This is for our benefit that we remember Him, you know, then you find tranquility. So let's pray five times a day. Then charity. Someone who has wealth, which is collected for over a year above their needs, 2.5% has to be given to the poor. Then, you know, fasting in the month of Ramadan, once, uh, once a year for one month, a person will abstain from food and drink and, uh, you know, marital relationships from the sun up to the sundown for, for one month. And then lastly, you know, Hajj, pilgrimage. This is performed once in a lifetime for every Muslim. So that's the basis of Islam. How does it sound? It sounds a lot, but there's a lot of it. Yeah, because it's, it's a complete way of life. And also, life is a test. You know, many people say they believe in God, but that belief has to be tested. And that, that test is by being given commandments and being given uh, prohibitions. So, as opposed to, you know, some religions, they say you just believe and that's it. And then, like for example, I mean, this is a, a Christian country, and as you can see, I'm English. Christianity, they will say that you don't have to do any good deeds. They've all been abrogated. Jesus done the good deeds for you. Even if you commit sins, that Jesus is going to die for you and be punished for your sins. We say no. Everyone has their own relationship with God. So that's the, the basis of Islam. Any questions? Okay. I, I advise you. You know, it's, uh, there's a verse in Quran, uh, the second chapter. It says, لا إكرهها في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي فما يكفر بالتعبود ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالأروة الوثقة. It mentions that there's no compulsion in religion. No one can force you what to believe in. No one can stop someone from what they believe in. You can't force someone. But the truth is clear from error. The human soul should recognize the truth. And then it continues. And whoever rejects and disbelieves in false gods and worships the one true God alone, Allah, then this person has taken hold of a firm handhold, which will never break. That's the, the message of Islam. It's just like, I know that there's so many religions and it's so hard to like, like look into all of them and see which one like actually connects with that. Like, you know, like, yeah, see what it is, there's so many religions, but the main ones are very clear. If, if God has created us, and he wants us to he wants us to worship him for our own benefit then it shouldn't be hidden so the the main religions are you want to find islam christianity uh, judaism hinduism and buddhism as for the rest we can't take them seriously because the, the message should be everywhere so you know an intelligent person they should be able to look at them and judge between them Obviously, I'm a Muslim and I'm going to tell you Islam is the true religion, but I'm going to give you some reasons. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the last messenger. His way of life is complete. There's no single aspect of life except he's taught something about it. Every single detail of our life, he's taught something about it. That's one thing. Second is the Quran. If you look at the Quran, the Quran, Allah has promised that he has revealed the book and he will protect it. It's, it's there in the original language, it's there as it was recited that time. Do you know that uh, hundreds of thousands of people have memorized Quran from beginning to end? So for example, if I, if I recite Quran now and I make a mistake, someone, another Muslim will be able to correct me like that. So the book is preserved. Then if you look at the central message of Islam, I would say, and many people say, it's the only one that makes sense. We believe God is one, we don't believe in a trinity. We don't believe that God is a Father, a Son, a Holy Spirit, all these three are one. We don't believe that God can be born from a woman. We don't believe that God can die on a cross. If you look at Judaism, even though it has many things which are similar to Islam, Judaism teaches that you have to be from this particular family. You have to be from the children of Israel. Otherwise, you are not from the chosen people. 
Whereas Islam is very clear. If, if you read the Old Testament, you will constantly uh, read the God of Israel, the God of the Hebrews, the God of Abraham. When you read the Quran, the first thing you read is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all that exists. We believe Islam is for everyone, all mankind. The first command in the Quran, it addresses uh, The first command in Quran is O oh mankind, so it's addressing everyone. O oh mankind, worship your Lord who created you and created those before you in order you may obtain righteousness. So Islam is the only religion which is for all mankind and is not exclusive. And we don't believe in uh, worshiping the creation alongside the creator. As for Hinduism and all the idols and their strange stories, I, I, I can go into detail, but I think it's, it's quite clear. Uh, and Buddhism, as well. If you, if you look into it, I would say Islam is the only religion that makes sense. That's why you'll find Islam is the fastest growing religion. So, you hear about it a lot, yeah. You hear about it a lot. And because people, they find satisfaction in it. And strange to say, or people may find it strange, sorry, the majority of people who embrace Islam in the West is uh, educated young women. I think the average age is 27. And most of them will say, because they, they looked into Islam, they studied it before they became Muslim. Because it, it's, I mean, it's easy to say, but if Allah, God has created us for a purpose, a person will not find tranquility, a person will not find uh, happiness or sufficiency in life until they fulfill that purpose, which is to know the Creator and live our lives the way He wants. I advise you, you know, take your time. As I said, there's no compulsion, but look into it. And I, I would say if a person is sincere, they will definitely find the truth. So, can, I, I'll give you a... Oh, I, I gave you already, sorry. Alhamdulillah, barakallah feekum. No problem, inshallah. Wa alaykum alhamdulillah. Shaykh wa alaykum alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Very good. Yeah, I'll say that after 2.30, and then, but in the winter, we'll, we'll come a bit earlier. So, yeah. Sorry? Any of yours? Oh, sure. See, the thing is, you're, you're looking at a microphone. He's looking at 280 pounds. <laughs> <laughs>